it's been a learning curve for me. And I'm still learning. I learn things all the time. The cameras are so getting so good, the lenses are getting so good, you know, so that's going to help you so much to tell the story. Very clearly decided that I'm not going to become a techie guy. I don't think that my job is to be servicing the technology. On the contrary, they should service my work and not me there. So I'm not here to be, to do a cult about brands. I don't believe in that. I believe in what I know how to do, which is light, frame, and tell a story with visuals. The new equipment is even, is even broader, as mushroom now, into where it's coming from, at you from every way, right? Because there's so many variations on the theme of the digital lights, for example, and things like that, and, and digital, uh, digital receptors and cameras, different cameras, and different tools are better for different functions than others might be. I'm not the most technical cinematographer on the planet. I have a lot of people around me that know how the cameras and the DRT world is working and all that. You know, I know exactly what I want that doesn't like, but you know, it's more like taste. Uh, I don't know anything about how the camera works right now because it's getting so complicated. I know the look I want to go for, you know, together with the director. I just finished shooting the finale for Sense8. We're using uh, digital cameras, we're using lighting technology that's, you know, seems to be developing something new develops every day and I think it's fantastic and it's it's a whole new way of making films that's uh, really exciting. I don't think it's ever about the gear. I mean, as we all know, you know, you can make a terrific film. Well, people have done it on iPhones now, and a little debatable about the quality of that. There's now we have many, many choices as opposed to having just a couple of, you know, Fresnel lights and a couple of open faces and working a lot with the fusion and bounce cards and things like that to achieve the results. Now we just have many different ways to, 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 to reach an end. Well, I mean, I do like the Venice right now that it has all the NDs built in. That's pretty fantastic for me. On the dig, I found it very interesting to kind of toggle the NDs back and forth and finding a depth of field that I like versus settle for. Because sometimes you just, you don't have time. You're like going through things and like, you know, get an assistant who's down there and the sun's going down. You don't have time to kind of really craft the, you know, you just, ah, oh, fuck, you may just go to here. Well, I'll pull out the filter and we'll ride the sunset. Or, you know, some cameras have NDs built in, but the stops are really massively apart from each other. So now you could kind of say, oh, I want to hold this kind of depth of field as far as a, a creative decision. And, and that has been kind of like a newfound kind of amazing thing for me. So I kind of wait till I'm doing a project and then I look at what my needs will be and then I look at what uh, uh, technology is available to me. Like say, hey, we got all this stuff you want to test. I said, it doesn't make sense for me to test all this stuff until I get a movie. Because when I get a movie, I'm going to test all the things that I think are applicable. And if there's some new thing, I could test the new thing that's applicable to that movie. Usually you find when you start talking to the director about what their vision is for the film, you know, in conjunction with what your own instinct is from the script, you, you sort of, you know that you want it to be anamorphic and then that only leaves so many options. You're already down to, okay, now we're just testing, you know, Panavision versus, you know, Hawk and Cook. Or you know that you want older glass, so it's, you know, Baltars, Kawas, K35. Like, I rarely find that I'm, you know, throwing every possibility up against the wall to see what sticks. Like, I think it, it, if you don't have some sense of where you're trying to, what you're trying to say, it's probably too early to be testing. Like usually by the time I'm testing, it's it's because I know I'm looking for a certain look and I'm trying to fine tune it within the options, you know, of that look. I need to test it myself and I need to do it kind of when I start the movie because even six months prior to that, it's something won't exist yet when I know I'm starting a movie and I know what I'm looking for in that film. Am I doing anamorphic? Am I doing this? I mean, right now I ended up shooting the Cook Anamorphics. Then I just used some sphere lenses because I was doing uh, Alexa 65 and because Seamus shot them on The Greatest Showman. And I go, oh, these are great. BC, I make the this is me. You know, I, I think it's great that all these tools are available, but I'm, I'm gonna actually like, you know, examine them t according to my needs at the time when I need them. Well, I learned and I did my career on film. And uh, so I'm one of those um, endangered species, right? And uh, so I have collected throughout the years a tremendous knowledge of how to put an image together and what is needed for that. But that is just that. So I, I, and that's why I say it's not a recipe. That's why 
you have to have a purpose. The image has to have a purpose and you have to understand what the story you're telling and the images have to be at the service of that story. I don't think you photograph digital the same way you did film. I think it's a very different thing altogether. We used to change film stocks and treat film stocks differently, a photochemical approach to our photography. So, you know, you used to have to test, you know, eight different film stocks to decide which stock you want to shoot your film on. Since we all approached it somewhat differently, we'd expose differently, we'd give the lab different instructions. So everybody's shooting with the same sensor, so you're trying to find, you know, your, your own LUT, your own take on the sensor. And of course, yes, there's LUTs and there's things we can do in post, uh, but it becomes lenses now. That's how we get our different looks. Older lenses or, you know, fuck them up and put a bunch of shit in front of them and try to, you know, do something to make it sort of stand out in the crowd. If you want to just do images that are because they're beautiful, they don't necessarily belong. So it's not about aesthetic only. The aesthetic actually gets defined on what choices you make to tell that story. So it becomes the language of that movie. That's why I'm a little bit, uh, or very much opposed to define it as style. So I don't want to be recognized because you can see that it's me doing that in whatever movie I'm doing. My style in a way is finding the language that movie needs, or I think it needs to be told, and will probably have very little to do with other movies that I, that I also did. Well, I think, you know, everyone says, oh, well, digital must be a lot easier because you're not having to expose and know you're negative. When we shot on films in the old days, you know, we have so many troubles all the time, you know. We, you didn't sleep in the night times because you have, when you were shooting low light, you're unsure, unsecure about your exposure. But I would say, yes, that exists. You know, anyone could go and shoot digital because you can see what you're going to get. But to make digital look good is more challenging than film. I'd say it used to be with a film where you'd, you'd have a window and you'd smash a light source for it, you'd let it bounce off the floor of lights on, you'd say, that's great, shoot. It's not quite that straightforward with digital because you look at that, you look at, particularly in the close-up work, you have to be, there are subtleties with digital that, you know, film, film would hide a lot of the flaws, but digital doesn't, there's nowhere to hide. There were so many troubles, you know, all that is gone right now, so I'm not missing film at all, I know. A lot of people are shooting on film, it could be fun to do that now and then again, but I think the new technique, the new digital world, you know, with the high quality cameras and high quality lenses is, it's great. It's just getting, it's helping you to capture the feeling you want to put up to the screen.